tonight. Lagos State Government expects increase in COVID-19 cases in the state in the next two months due to rising cases in community transmission. 600 al Majre from 19 northern states undergo COVID-19 tests as they begin isolation in Niger State. Former President Olushigo Basanjo calls for restructuring of the nation's security architecture, says destiny of the country is in the hands of Nigerians. Acting National Committee members of the All Progressives Congress gives assurance that party's leadership crisis is over as they visit the president again. And six injured, one dead following stabbing attack in Glasgow City Centre. Plus business and news later from our studios in London. On business news, federal government announces plan to implement 100% increase in domestic and international passenger flight service charge from August the 1st. On sports news tonight, former UEFA President Michel Platini formally placed under investigation in Switzerland over $2 million payment from FIFA in 2011. Lagos State residents are to brace up for even more confirmed COVID-19 cases in the next few months. A State Commissioner for Health made this prediction at a briefing in Tlin, Lagos today, adding that the state has accredited five private labs to join the state-owned facilities to meet testing capacity needs. He also named three private hospitals which have passed a test to treat COVID-19 cases and will be engaging in such services. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health and his permanent secretaries are here to give an update on the COVID-19 situation in Lagos, as well as plans to tackle the pandemic in the state. The grim news is that cases in the state are set to go up for some time. We are in the middle of the outbreak. We have not even peaked yet, and therefore we're still on the upstroke. The testing facilities, as we've established at the moment, are the Lagos University Teaching Hospital, or LUTH, the Lagos State Biobank, the Nigerian Institute of Medical Research, and the Central Public Health Laboratory in Yaba. We've also included some private facilities. The private laboratories are Total Medical Services, SINLAB, 54G, Medbury, Biologics, O2 Medical Services, and Clean Lancet Laboratories. But more labs could mean more confirmed cases, and more cases diagnosed means the need for more isolation space. This need is being handled partly by home-based care managed at the primary healthcare level for milder cases, and partly by partnering with private medical facilities. We've re uh, licensed uh, three uh, health facilities now, to improve the uh, isolation space. And we have first cardiology, uh, Palon, Memorial Clinic, and Vedic. See, we're going to be opening two new facilities um, next week, one at Yaba and one in Ikeja. And we have plans for more. So we are building robust capacity for isolation, coupled with our home-based strategy. And to make sure no one slips through the cracks, the 20 testing centers in the community are to more than double to 57, with the added responsibility of making sure the home-based program runs smoothly. And in Delta State, the governor, Dr. Ifayo Kowa, and members of his family are in isolation for 14 days after his daughter tested positive for coronavirus. This was confirmed in a statement by the chief press secretary to the governor, Mr. Ulisa Ifiajika, who says efforts are being intensified to stem the spread of COVID-19 in the state. The state government insists the virus is real, reminding residents to be disciplined and comply with all protocols as specified by the NCDC to ensure their safety. 
Now to the North Central, where over 600 Almajiri children mopped up from various local government areas in Niger State are to undergo testing for COVID-19. The children, who are currently being accommodated at an isolation centre at the Mina Hajj camp in Boso local government area, are said to have come from the 19 northern states. According to the state government, those who test positive will be treated in Niger State, while those who test negative will be repatriated to their various states. Our correspondent, Emperor Simon, reports. Almajuri children in their hundreds marching into the isolation center at Arj Camp in Mina after being mopped up from across the 25 local government areas of the state. Before going in, they forced me to wash their hands and then supplied kids they would need while at the isolation center. Then their data are collected and saved in a database an exercise the state government says is in line with the agreement by the Northern State Governors Forum. We have about 604 Almajiris as of today. Um, when they come, we, we register them and um, we take their blood samples. And um, once their results are out, we return them back to their respective states. The process of sample collection makes some of the Almajiri uncomfortable. <laughs> Oblivious of what they are here for, some of them appear bewildered, but they queue up for what's next. Over the next one week or two, the Almagoway are expected to stay here until their results are out, raising concern about how much the government is willing to give them for their welfare. The major challenge has been with the children themselves because um, initially they came scared. They don't know what their fate is going to be, but I'm sure we have tried as much as possible to dignify them. Their welfare has been the paramount priority of the government. They, they have their square meals, they have their basic needs, so they are believing in us. The, show, the stay is going to be very short and very soon they will return back to their respective states where they would be with their parents. ATL Marjorie children were earlier mopped up and brought here by the state government, out of which 11 tested positive, but they've all been treated, discharged, and reunited with their families. Emperor Simon, Channels Television News. Following the rising cases of COVID-19 in Ondo State, the government has warned that stiffer penalties could be applied to residents who flout government directors for preventing the spread of the pandemic. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Wahab Adigbinro, said this in an interview with Channel Television in Akure, the state capital. Yesterday, a total of 44 new positive cases of COVID-19 were recorded in the state, the highest daily toll recorded since the pandemic spread to the state in April. Well, still in the southwest, frontline health workers continue to be affected by COVID-19 as staff members of the Federal Medical Center at Belkuta in Ogun State have tested positive. According to the spokesperson of the center, Shegun Urishaju, the affected staff consists of medical doctors, nurses and administration staff. It confirms that they were part of a team that had contact with a two-and-a-half-year-old coronavirus patient. Mr. Rishajo says so far, none of the staff have shown symptoms of coronavirus, but they have proceeded on self-isolation while basic treatment is being carried out on them. The elderly in society are demanding the immediate establishment of departments to cater for them at the federal, state and local governments in the country. They say the times are now more difficult to cope with, coupled with the ravaging coronavirus. Speaking in Lagos, a group of elderly, 60 years and plus, advocate better treatment of the aged in Nigeria. A correspondent, Gimba Umar, reports. A convergence with concerns over COVID-19. These few sit in observance of the guidelines. They are advocates, 60 and above, speaking with one voice, saying a recalibration of a system to cater for the old must begin in the face of the pandemic. We plan to advocate as a matter of urgency 
for a department for our elders in the federal, states, and local government. This will bring help nearer to them. Just like we have one after the other, they bear women. their minds on what the government can do to better their lot. Failure of which they say presents a green future. Just like we have um, ministry for women, we have ministry for youths, we want ministry for seniors. The meeting does ministry? not last long. Stepping outside, Mrs. Awoshika, all grey at 72, laments. For her, a plan must be in place now that they are old, feeble and dependent. A, lot of things that have been happening. a picture of a man, frail and old, exemplifies what many fear. He walks down the streets, slowly, with no guide. The dangers ahead, daunting. I think the Lagos State have been trying, but they have to try more to really locate the elderly that, are, that they need food. But can a truly effective system that caters for the elderly take root in the country? In those days, if you go to loot, there was a heart, a heart and foundation built by late Mko Abiola. These are the things people that has money are supposed to do for the masses. The population of the elderly is diverse making up 30% with physical and medical needs as seen in war veterans from the East. Back in Lagos, however, the big question is, will their cry meet listening ears? While the hustle and bustle in Lagos continues in the midst of a gradual easing of a lockdown, the hope for the elderly is that reprieve will come their way. And quickly, Jimba Umar, Channel Television News. To another issue now, at least 18 Nigerians stranded in Europe as a result of the coronavirus pandemic have arrived in the country. The returnees who flew in from Paris, France, landed at exactly 2.50 p.m. at the Mursala Mohammed International Airport. The chairman, Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabri Iriwa, confirmed their arrival via her Twitter handle. She says the free chartered flight was coordinated by the Nigerian mission in France under Ambassador Budupe Rili and monitored by NITCOM. The evacuees are to observe the mandatory 14 days of self-isolation as stipulated by the Nigeria Center for Disease Control and the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19. Meanwhile, another 145 Nigerian citizens have returned from Sudan after being stranded there because of the coronavirus pandemic. They arrived at the Namdi Azikiwe International Airport at about 12.45 p.m. today via Air Sudan. This was announced in a tweet by the Nigeria Diaspora Commission. And as mandated by the NCDC, Ministry of Health and the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, the returnees are to proceed on a 14-day self-isolation period. In part two after the break, the People's Democratic Party accuses the president of violating his oath of office by hosting the APC NEC meeting at the Federal Executive Council chamber. Plus, the Supreme Court affirms Musa Wada as authentic governorship candidate of the People's Democratic Party during the last governorship election. Join us again. Welcome back. If it has joined us, you're watching the News at 10 live on Channels Television Lagos. A reminder of our top stories. Lagos State Government expects increase in COVID-19 cases in the state in the next two months due to rising cases in community transmission. 600 al Madre from northern Nigerian states, 19 of them undergo COVID-19 tests as they begin isolation in Niger State. Former President Elushigo Basanjo calls for restructuring of the nation's security architecture, says destiny of the country is in the hands of Nigerians. Acting National Committee members of All Progressives Congress gives assurance that the party's leadership crisis is over as they visit the president again. 
and six injured, one dead, following stabbing attack in Glasgow city centre. Our website, channelstv.com, has more information on our top stories and others. Subscribe and watch Channel Television's live stream on YouTube and other social media platforms using your mobile device browser. Or download the Channels TV app for Android and iOS devices from their respective stores. You can also watch us via your smart TV platforms on Apple TV, Android TV, Fire TV and Roku. The Lagos State Commissioner for Health, Professor Aking Abayomi, has confirmed the former governor of Oyo State, Abiola Ajimobi, died of COVID-19 complications. Professor Abayomi explained on his Twitter handle that Senator Ajimobi died from multiple organ failure following complications from coronavirus at a private COVID-19 approved care facility in Lagos State. He also conveys the condolences of the Lagos COVID-19 incident commander, Governor Babajide Sonwolu and the entire Lagos response team to the entire to the family of the former governor and the people of Oyo State. Meanwhile, former governor of Oyo State, Senator Abiola Ajimobi, who died yesterday from COVID-19 complications, will be buried soon. But according to his aide, the burial will be strictly a family affair. Across most of the states, flags fly at half mast. The former governor who died in Lagos served in the Senate and two terms as governor of Oyo State. Isiaka Abiola Ajimobi, born on December 16, 1949, trained as a business and finance expert, sometimes bubbly. Listen again. Huh? Other times, Frank. A former deputy minority leader of the Senate, who after failing at his first shot at becoming governor of Oyo State in 2007, did not relent. He fought back and he gave it another shot in 2011, seven, eight years at the helm of affairs as governor of Oyo State. I sat with him when he was in office as governor. So you will be one of those clamoring for restructuring of the nation. Yeah, we must, we must, uh, the federal government must unbundle. The federal government has no business in agriculture. Senator Abiola Ajimobi here at one of his very last public engagements at the presidential villa. During his 70th birthday, he sure had a plan for the future. And at this age, I'm still prepared. No longer elective or selective politics, but politics of service to humanity. Senator Abiola Jimobi breathed his last, losing the battle to complications from COVID-19. <laughs> at his home, sympathizers are calling to pay their respect. Flags are at half mast in all your state. He will be sorely missed by family and loved ones. To politics now, governors of the All Progressives Congress-led states have commended President Mamadou Buhari for his efforts uh, that have resulted in the resolution of the party's disputes. That's according to the governor of Kebi State, Atiku Bagudu, who led a delegation of the progressive governors on a visit to the president at the presidential villa in Abuja today. Governor Bagudu, who spoke to State House correspondents after the visit, also said President Buhari does not interfere with the running of the party because he's focused on actualizing the mandates given to him by Nigerians. This is a, a thank you visit to Mr. President, which I have in the delegation the brand new chairman of the All Progressive Congress caretaker and national, extraordinary national planning convention, planning committee. He's uh, happy that at last we want less destruction because Mr. President is conscious of the mandate given to him by Nigerians. 
And even though he, he bothers a lot about his party, but what dominates his daily action is economy, security, transparency, and the progress of Nigeria. But Mr. President is very clear that he received due legal uh, and remember, in, before the 2019 primaries, Mr. President demonstrated to everyone in this country that he will never sacrifice due process for expediency. Even when it is convenient to extend tenure of the then executive so that we don't have a convention and primaries at the same time, Mr. President no, says no. No matter how tough it is, we are going to do the uh, correct legal thing. So, Mr. President would never do anything uh, which the uh, constitutional provision of party, talk less of the country, does not allow him to do. Meanwhile, the main opposition, the People's Democratic Party, is alleging the president violated his oath of office by using the Federal Executive Council chambers and government resources to conduct the affairs of his party by holding the APC neck meeting in the council chamber. In a statement by the party, the PDP describes the action as the height of corruption and desecration of the sanctity of the seat of power. It has it by using government facilities and resources to promote the activities of the APC, the Attorney General of the Federation has become culpable of the same offence for which he has been prosecuting innocent Nigerians. They're asking the Attorney General to resign immediately from office and surrender himself for prosecution. The PDP also condemned the conduct of the APC neck meeting, describing it as a coup against the party's constitution, which prescribes 14 days notice for regular neck meetings and seven days notice for the case of an emergency meeting. Staying with politics, the Labour Party has held its primaries for the Edo State Governorship election with Comrade Isaiah Osifo, emerging winner and candidate the of the party. The exercise, which held inside the party secretariat in Benin City, the state capital, was adjudged peaceful and hitch-free by delegates and observers. The National Secretary of the Party, Mr. Justice Aburie, who is chairman of LP Governorship Election Committee, says his party has further reiterated its belief in internal democracy. A five-man panel of the Supreme Court has dismissed the appeal filed by Mr. Abubakar Ibrahim, challenging the candidacy of Mr. Musa Wada as the candidate of the People's Democratic Party for the 2019 governorship election in Kogi State. In a unanimous judgment delivered by Justice Amina Auji, the Apex Court affirmed the candidacy of Mr. Wada on the grounds that Mr. Ibrahim failed to prove the allegation of illegal thumbprinting of 600 ballot papers. The court further held that the appeal filed by Mr. Ibrahim is grossly lacking in merit and has become a mere academic exercise aimed at wasting the court's time. The issues have been finally laid to rest. The, we have consistently keep saying from the one that when you made an allegation, as they have done, that my client forged and thumbprinted 600 ballot papers, which was accepted by Governor Petrie of Adamawa State, that was a serious criminal allegation that required proof beyond reasonable doubt. Indeed, the evidence they presented, as the Supreme Court has said today, is that it's documentary hearsay. And I keep saying, where a police report, interim report, is dated 15th of September, and comprehensive report dated 5th of September. One didn't say there was ballot paper. The, the interim, which was after uh, the comprehensive report, now made a bogus allegation, and they didn't produce the police for us to cross-examine. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo is advocating the restructuring of the nation's security architecture to boost the confidence and hopes of all Nigerians on security of lives. Chief Obasanjo was addressing a selected audience at a virtual lecture on the COVID-19 pandemic and security issues in Nigeria in Abelkuta, the Ogo State capital. 
While being optimistic about the country's progress, the former president warned the northern Nigeria warned that northern Nigeria should not make the mistake of insinuating that no other part of the country will produce the country's president. We are all bothered and burdened. The beginning should be seeking to know why the criminals are doing what they are doing. And with that knowledge, we can begin to work out permanent solutions that will move criminals from crimes and take away insecurity for all of us. Federal security architecture as organized and operated by the present government cannot give any individual or group hope, let alone assurance of security within Nigeria. Our destiny is in our own hands. In reform and restructuring, security architecture, structure, and arrangement must devolve more security responsibility on the community, local, and state authorities. Unfortunately, I have recently observed from some writers on the security situation in the North the feeling or attitude of it serves them right. We must not gloat at the difficulties or misfortune of others. Rather, we must empathize with them. Whatever there is, uh, wherever there is insecurity in Nigeria, it must be of concern to all of us. Meanwhile, defense authorities say an attempted kidnap of passengers along the Abuja Kaduna Expressway has been foiled by bandits, uh, uh, foiled, foiled by the troops' operation Thunderstrike. A spokesperson for the Nigerian military, Major General John Enenche, explains in a statement that the troops were deployed to the scene following intelligence reports and the activities of armed bandits between Olams and Alheri camp along the Abuja Kaduna Expressway. According to General Enenche, the soldiers overwhelmed the bandits with superior firepower, forcing them to abandon their mission. The passengers in the targeted vehicle traveling from Abuja to Kaduna managed to escape into surrounding bushes and were subsequently rescued by the soldiers. Two bilateral issues. Now the government of Ghana is to rebuild the demolished building belonging to the Nigerian embassy in Accra, the Ghanaian capital, as the assurance conveyed in a statement from the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Mr. Femi Bajabiamila. According to him, the Ghanaian government has also promised to see the property as well as documents relating to it to the Nigerian embassy. The speaker says the promise was secured through a telephone discussion he had with the speaker of the Ghanaian parliament, Mr. Aaron Kwae, on Thursday. When the news at 10 returns, faith-based organization Rose of Sharon drives conversation on challenges and opportunities for widows in the COVID-19 pandemic era. Plus, the federal government announces plan to implement a 100% increase on domestic and international passenger flight service charge from August 1st. That's on Business News. Join us again. Welcome back. There's been a rise of about 15% in the use of psychoactive drugs amongst Nigerians, according to a report by the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime. As Nigeria joins the international community to mark the International Day Against Drug Abuse, medical workers are seeking regulation of drugs which they believe will serve as a first line of action towards curtailing the scourge in the country. Out of a nation's over 200 million people, about 70% constitute the youths, and over the past one year, nearly 15% of the adult population in Nigeria, which is around 14.3 million people, reported a considerable level of use of psychoactive drug substances. 
the highest level of drug use, according to a report by the United Nations Office on Drug and Crime, was recorded among people between 25 to 39 years. While cannabis is identified as the most widely used drug, sedatives, heroin, cocaine, and a non-medical use of prescription opioids are also noted. This, according to the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, poses a challenge to the nation. We have a prevailing 14% drug abuse problem, which is like five times more than is available or obtainable in all other countries of the world. Generally, it is 5%, but in Nigeria, it's 14.3. The theme for this year's International Day Against Drug Abuse is Better Knowledge for Better Cure. A psychologist, Abby Goodman, says lack of adequate enforcement is responsible for the rise in the number of youths who use them. There is no recognition center for the children. So obviously a lazy man, an idle man, what's he going to do? Turn into drug frustration, no job. So it's, 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 it's a problem in Nigeria. It's something we, just, we really need to look into and you know, have a public opinion, not just the government anymore, because if government are not doing enough, we need to come together as a citizen, both at home in diaspora and save our country. To mark the day in Abuja, members of the Nigerian Medical Association drew the attention of parents to the shocking statistics and called for their support in managing the condition of those already affected by drug abuse. Parents, pay attention to your children. Um, make sure they're not being abused. They're not ne don't neglect them. Give them the attention. Engage them. Talk to them about drugs, about this, all the temptations and the evils that are out there. And then once somebody starts using um, drugs, all of us can tell that this person is acting differently. Um, we need to um, seek medical treatment right away. And we have people who are trained to, to treat um, drug abuse. The effect of drug abuse on any nation is unquantifiable. The challenge is therefore before government, civil society organizations and parents to act fast in reducing this trend before it becomes a national emergency. Rose Sharon Foundation, a non-profit, faith-based organization focused on easing the burden of widows and orphans, is steering a first-of-its-kind conversation on the challenges and opportunities for widows and COVID-19 amid the COVID-19 pandemic. The digital meeting was called in commemoration of the International Widows' Day, marked annually, to raise awareness against the violation of human rights that widows suffer in many countries following the death of their spouses. Our correspondent, Dari Dewu, has more. Vulnerable in many ways, stigma, violence, and other violations of fundamental human rights are a few of the social issues confronting widows in Nigeria. There are an estimated 258 million widows around the world, and nearly one in 10 live in extreme poverty. Apart from that, 2.7 billion women are denied access to the same choice of jobs as men due to legal restrictions, and one in three face gender-based violence every day. That's according to the United Nations. Foundation also now with COVID-19, a new challenge is born, which makes this virtual meeting first for this vulnerable group organized by the Rose of Sharon Foundation timely. International Widows Day Program 2020. The founder and convener, and Mrs. Foloran Shualakija, lays the premise. We organize annual programs to commemorate this day and invite widows and stakeholders in government, non-governmental organizations and individuals to galvanize support for the cause of widows in Nigeria. It is important that we do not forget the challenges these vulnerable groups are still facing despite all that has been done so far. Then the message from the Grand Matron of the Foundation the First Lady of Lagos State, Mrs. Ibijoket Sungwolu. Issues bordering on welfare of widows in our climb must never be relegated. Widows and children are also at the receiving end of sexual and gender-based violence, especially in which was recorded a high spike during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdown. Although the lockdown has ushered us all into a new way of life, which sees as a challenge, I see opportunities. Wife of the former governor of Cross River State, Onari Duke, encourages the widows to see opportunities 
even in the hardest times. We should be encouraged at the fact that currently, as far as COVID is concerned, no one is left unscratched. There is a high rate of households that have reported loss of income. As the share ideas are now to confront the socioeconomic issues they face, the Rose of Sharon Foundation says it will continue to push for gender equality to erase the challenges confronting the widows. Dari Ido, Channels Television News. A part of the outbound Kara Bridge on Lagos Ibado Expressway is to be shut down by the Federal Ministry of Works in order to carry out an integrity test on the infrastructure and determine its serviceability. This follows the numerous accidents that have occurred on the bridge over time, the latest which occurred on Sunday, involving a fuel tanker and trucks resulting in an inferno and the loss of two lives. In a letter to the Lagos State Government seeking its support in carrying out the work, the Ministry explained that the contractor handling the section of the expressway requested that the bridge be shut to facilitate the project. Already, some Lagos State emergency workers have been working to remove the burnt tanker and truck which had been left on the bridge since Sunday. This is News is Next. Here's Kayo D. Okikyolu. Thank you, Amirachi, and you're welcome to Business News. We we'll start off with aviation. As the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria says, it plans to increase passenger service charge by 100% with effect from August 1st. Under the new charge regime, domestic passengers will pay 2,000 naira as against a previous 1,000 naira charge, while international passengers will pay $100 as against the previous $50. In a letter dated June the 22nd, 2020, the managing director of FAN, Captain Rabiu Yadudu, says the decision seeks to improve airport infrastructure across the country. Meanwhile, there are concerns that the implementation of the new charge will trigger rise in airfares. And barring any last-minute change, the registration portal of the federal government's social investment scheme, NPAR, will be opened to intending applicants tonight. This is according to a tweet on the NPAR handle, which explains that application for the June 2020 Batch C enrollment is free of charge. It adds that graduate and non-graduate who are presently unemployed and are between 18 to 35 years old with a desire to acquire lifelong skills in education and health can apply. Intending applicants can apply for the scheme on the Social Investment Programs portal. A latest survey by the Nigeria Employers Consultative Association shows that 74.2% of businesses in the country have stopped operating due to the COVID-19 pandemic, while 15.8% are either fully on-site or teleworking. It adds that over 90% of surveyed enterprises stated that limited cash flow was an impediment to operations, and over 90% added that demand for their goods and services had significantly reduced. The survey shows that 78.2% of enterprises had supply challenges as suppliers were unable to fulfill orders leading to disruption in supply chains. The World Bank believes that Nigeria needs to deepen economic reforms and boost government revenues in order to have a sustained recovery after the twin shock of oil price drop and the COVID-19 pandemic. According to Bank's country director, Shubham Chaudhuri, Efforts by the federal government to rebuild the economy away from oil needs more political courage to be displayed. He adds that the World Bank is considering a $3 billion budget support loan for Nigeria and approval is expected within the next three to four months. And over to the NSE, where local equities made a rebound to close the week positive after days of bearish trend, with the market capitalization increasing by 107 billion naira. Chimezio Biwago has details of today's trading. Thank you, and welcome to the Stock Market Report. Green, that's how the market closed today. It was a pleasant surprise. There was a lot of bagging haunting. We saw the bull and the bear struggle for supremacy. At the end, the bull emerged as winner, pushing the index up by almost 1%, all thanks to Airtel Africa and Nestle. And you know what? It would have been sweeter if Dango de Cement moved up a bit, but that didn't happen. And that pulled back the industrial sector, as we can see on the sectoral chart. 
And despite the positive close today, investors are still very cautious in trading equities. If you look at the activity chart, the deals and volume traded are still thin. However, the amount realized in the market today increased. On a week-on-week -week basis, the market is just flat. That's a great departure from the negative close we have seen in the past two weeks. While there seem to be some good prospects going into the new week and new month, traders say it's not yet to hurry as there are no catalysts to spur investors' appetite. We can only be hopeful as we keep our fingers crossed. And that was the stock market report. I'm Chimeze Obi. Wow. Well, thank you, Chimizi. Let's head out to Nigeria now, where U.S. stocks fell sharply today after Texas rolled back some of its reopening measures, raising concern about the latest spike in coronavirus cases and its impact on the economy. Well, let's find out how other major global markets close the day. In business news tonight, I am Kaya Ryokikyolu. The news at 10 continues with Amarachi. Thanks, Kaya. Is still ahead on the news at 10 and six injured, one dead, following stabbing attack in Glasgow city centre. Plus, more stories from our London studio in Around the World in Five. Stay with us. Welcome back. Six people, including a police officer, are being treated for injuries in hospital following a stabbing attack at a hotel in Glasgow city centre. Police shot dead the attack and said they're not treating this as, um, as terrorism. They also say they're not looking for anyone in relation to the incident. Here's Simon Pusey now with more international news in Around the World in Five. Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London with your international news around the world in five. New clusters of COVID-19 have started to appear around the world in countries thought to have passed the worst phase of the crisis. The United States has recorded the second largest increase in coronavirus cases since the health crisis began. Overall cases have risen 25% since last week, with 10 states reporting a greater than 50% rise in new infections. In South America, Chile has passed the grim milestones of a quarter of a million cases and almost 5,000 deaths. However, Health Minister Enrique Paris said the most recent figures pointed to a slight improvement in the pandemic. Tensions remain high in Naples and Italy, where the government deployed the army in a nearby town after some 49 people tested positive for the virus. Soldiers stood at barricades and police at checkpoints, while angry residents complained they had little information about what was happening. In Portugal, the government has announced people in several parts of Greater Lisbon will have to return to isolation from next week, as the Portuguese authorities deal with a worrying wave of new cases in the city's outskirts. In the United States, the Trump administration has asked the U.S. Supreme Court to invalidate Obamacare, which has provided health insurance to millions of Americans. Government lawyers said the act became invalid when the previous Republican-led Congress axed parts of it. Democratic challenger Joe Biden attacked the move, saying Mr. Trump had put millions of lives at risk during the coronavirus pandemic. A new record high temperature has been recorded in Siberia beyond the Arctic Circle. Experts say this is a warning cry from the Arctic. Thermometers reported a blistering temperature of 38 degrees Celsius beyond the Arctic Circle. The extreme heat is fanning the unusual extent of wildfires across the boreal forest and the tundra in northern Russia. Scientists believe climate change is causing the Arctic to warm twice as fast as the rest of the world, and the Siberian heat wave would be typical of this trend. Thousands of Burundians have lined the road to the capital, Gitega, as the body of former President Pierre Nkurunziza was escorted for a state funeral. He ruled the Central African country for 15 years and died two weeks ago of what the government said was heart failure at the age of 55. However, rumours suggest he may have caught the coronavirus, as his wife had been flown to Nairobi for treatment for the virus just two weeks before. Friday was declared a national holiday for the funeral. 
Thailand and Myanmar have destroyed illicit drugs worth more than $2 billion in an annual event to mark the International Day Against Drug Abuse. The Thai Food and Drug Administration officials incinerated 25 tons of confiscated drugs, including methamphetamine, ice, ecstasy, cocaine and heroin. Myanmar's police also burned a drug haul worth $144 million. The countries remain among the biggest producers of heroin in the world. In Kenya, the pandemic is jeopardizing a pioneering project to preserve the northern white rhino. The international travel restrictions caused by the pandemic are forcing the organization behind the project, BioForce, to delay some of its key procedures. The northern white rhino is on the brink of extinction due to heavy poaching. The only surviving northern white rhinos are a mother and a daughter, both infertile, making them the world's most endangered mammal. Lightning strikes have killed at least 117 people in two of the most populous Indian states. At least 93 people were killed in the state of Bihar, and another 24 people died in Uttar Pradesh. Most of the victims were farmers working outdoors in the open. Lightning and thunderstorms are common in this season in northern India, but experts believe climate change is contributing to storms becoming more frequent and more extreme. And finally, a Japanese startup has developed an internet-connected smart mask that can transmit messages and translate from Japanese into eight other languages. It's hot today, too. The white plastic sea mask fits over standard face masks and connects via Bluetooth to a smartphone and tablet application that can transcribe speech into text messages, make calls, or amplify the mask wearer's voice. The first 5,000 sea masks will be shipped to buyers in Japan, but the enterprise is looking to sell in China, the United States, and Europe as well. And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos. Thanks a lot, Simon. Jeff Fuzono joins us now with Sports News. Thanks, Amaracha, and welcome to Sports News. The Athletics Federation of Nigeria has revealed that seven Nigerian track and field athletes qualify to benefit from the International Athletics Foundation Welfare Fund. The World Athletics in April announced a 500,000 relief fund to help athletes was struggling owing to the suspension of activities during the COVID-19 pandemic. The organization said athletes will be entitled to a maximum of $4,000. Rivers United has confirmed that it will engage FIFA for an amicable resolution after the World Football Governing Body banned the Nigerian club for three transfer windows for failing to fulfill its contractual obligations to former player Samuel Akrugo. Rivers United said effort is being made to resolve the issues with the Ghanaian goalkeeper. The 25-year-old joined the Port Harcourt Bay side in January 2018, but left in 2019. Michel Platini has been formally placed under investigation in Switzerland in relation to a $2 million payment he received from FIFA in 2011. Swiss federal prosecutors this month extended their open criminal proceedings into the then FIFA president Sir Blatter's role in the payment, which includes Platini. Platini was the president of UEFA at the time, is suspected of being an accomplice to criminal mismanagement, misappropriation, and forgery. Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp has warned his rival that his team will not stop in their pursuit of more success after securing the English Premier League title. Liverpool were crowned champions with seven games remaining after second place Manchester City lost to Chelsea 2 1. However, the German says there is plenty more to come from his side will return to training on Saturday ahead of their trip to Man City on July the 2nd. This really showed is it's so, it's so exceptional. I, I, I cannot describe it. And we will not stop. That's it. We, we, we will not stop. We really have to and will um, stay focused because um, we, we, see, we see the opportunity. But will not stop doesn't mean uh, that we will win everything. We just want to improve because the other teams, they, 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 they are really good already and, uh, and will be better and stuff like this. And City is anyway absolutely exceptional. So we, it, I cannot promise that we win something, but I can promise that we try everything to improve. And that's it on sports. I'm Jeffrey Uzan. is back to you, Amarachi.
Thanks, Jeffrey. Six persons have been reportedly killed and five others injured as bandits attacked two communities in Damusa local government area of Katsina State. Among those killed were a policeman, while two pregnant women are said to be among those injured. Residents say the bandits, numbering over 100, stormed two villages on foot around 2 a.m., shooting sporadically. The policeman was said to have been killed when a police team drafted to repel the bandits ran into an ambush. Meanwhile, the military says two camps in a cave hideout of a gang led by one Hassan Tagwai in Domboru Forest, Zamfara State, has been, have been destroyed in a task conducted by the air components of Operation Hadrindaji. The coordinator of the Defense Media Operations, Major General John Enenche, said some key leaders of the bandits, as well as several other fighters, were killed in the airstrikes. And the main news again, the Lagos State Government today said it expects an increase in COVID-19 cases in the state over the next two months due to rising cases of community transmission. And 600 Almadri of children from 19 northern states began COVID-19 isolation in Niger State. While six persons were injured, one dead following a stabbing attack in Glasgow City Centre. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I'm Amarachi Ubani. Good night.